Hello, my social media friends. Paula here with Canine Country Academy. And I wanted to jump on here live to connect with you because I'm guessing some of you are being eaten alive by your new puppy. Congratulations, you are now raising a baby shark. Just kidding, a baby alligator. Oh, just kidding, it's just a puppy. <laughs> I wanted to let you guys know that we actually have a free chat with me this Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern time to talk about how to successfully raise your puppy. It's a great opportunity to connect with other puppy parents and get your questions answered by a professional dog trainer, me. Today, I wanted to connect with you and talk about what you can do to curb some of the unwanted mouthing and chewing on inappropriate things. So feel free to ask questions here as well as we talk about redirecting their mouth, all right? So how many of you got puppies? What kind of puppy did you get? What did you name it? Do you have pictures? Like, we like to see that kind of stuff, okay? <laughs> so I have Norby in here. He is not a puppy. But what I want to tell you is that your dog likely will need something to put their mouth on appropriately for the rest of their life. Puppies do need a lot of things to put in their mouth appropriately because they're exploring. They will start teething at around four, five, six months of age, depending on the dog. And that's when they really need a lot of chew items. But when you first get your puppy at like, you know, eight to 12 weeks, they're probably going to put their mouth on you, on your furniture and everything else. And as long as it's not hurting you or causing a problem, I'm actually okay with some mouthing on skin because this is a normal behavior for the dog. They're seeing, you know, how hard is too hard. And some dogs, especially if they've been removed from their, you know, family too soon and or they are a retrieving breed. Oh, congratulations. Mary got a border collie puppy. Dogs who are naturally more mouthy will be more mouthy as, as babies. And so take that into consideration. It doesn't mean that you have a bad dog. It just means that you're going to have to do more work on the front end. This is one reason we recommend whether you're getting from a rescue or from a breeder is that you want the puppy to stay with their mom and their siblings if it's a good situation until they're at least 12 weeks of age because that's when they're learning bite inhibition, how hard is too hard. And also they're learning about, you know, what they can put their mouth on and the mom and the siblings are going to tell that puppy off way better than we could ever do it. We really can't as humans teach them bite inhibition the way another dog could if the dog is an appropriate dog. Now, let's say that you're getting a rescue or you're getting from a breeder and it's not a good scenario. Like the mom isn't a good mom. The, you know, maybe they're a singleton, they don't have other puppies with them. You need to make a decision if you haven't already gotten your puppy is do I really want this puppy? Because it, it might be more mouthy. Like it could be a great dog otherwise, but are you willing to put up with that mouthiness? Maybe your skin is more sensitive or you have like, you know, immune issues. That might be a reason to not get that puppy. You have to make that choice because you're the one who's going to have to put up with it, right? <laughs> and we don't want to have like a quick fix because that could really impact the dog negatively if we're harsh to the puppy or, you know, doing things to the puppy to try to get them to stop, that can actually create more aggression in the dog. So what do we do, right? So with your puppy, it's really important to have a variety of chew items and to not have them necessarily out all the time. The same with their toys, honestly. When you have a puppy and even an adult dog, having a bunch of toys is totally fine. Like, oh my gosh, I have a ton of toys. But I try to rotate them, especially some special toys that maybe I don't want them to totally do stuff. I live with four terriers. We have a lot of unstuffed toys. But they also have a variety of chew items. And I don't leave them out for resource guarding reasons. But I also want them to be special when they get the chew item. And I will actually add a link to some chew items so you guys can look at some things to say, like, what are you comfortable giving your dog? So again, thank you for joining. We're talking about puppy tips. If you got a puppy or thinking about getting a puppy, there is a free discussion this Saturday that you can register for. You can be anywhere in the world and join that. I will be sending out that information later today. 
on how to get into the actual call, but you have to register first. So one of the items that I recommend that you get for your puppy is natural chew items. Now, when you give any kind of natural chew item or an item that they might choke on, you always want to be there to supervise your puppy. You do not want to leave these items with them alone because they could choke. You, you always want to supervise that. I'll talk about a couple other items you can use that you could leave in the crate, depending on the individual dog. So what I have with me, and I'm hoping Norby will come up here and, and let you see it, him chew it, but this is a Himalayan chew. So it's, it tends to be like goat's milk, um, and it's hardened. So this is really hard, but you can see, let me bring it close to you guys. The dogs have been chewing on it for a couple of weeks. So um, Norby and Panzer are two Toy Fox Terriers. They're three and four years old. And my older dogs really don't care for these. You might have to try a couple different things and you can get them in different sizes. This is considered a medium. They come in also smaller, like little hunks. But I like this because it's natural and it's gonna be easy for them to chew. Some people don't wanna give their puppies anything that's super hard because you don't wanna like have them break a tooth. So people will avoid things like antlers. A split antler might be easier for your dog to chew. Some dogs don't like antlers, like a deer antler. You can find these online. You can find them at local pet boutiques. I'm sure places like Hollywood Feed have them. And just get like, you know, one or two things and see, you know, what your dog likes. If it's something that might be rich, this isn't super rich unless your dog is consuming a lot of it quickly. You don't want to create any kind of digestive upset. If I give them a bully stick or a marrow bone, something that maybe is higher, that um, has a lot of richness to it, it could upset their stomach. So I won't give them that for very long. And this is a good opportunity to teach your dog to give things up. For higher value items, you might have to like throw lunch meat far away to get things back. So try to get items that are easy for them to consume and you don't want to get it back necessarily. But if you get something that's bigger and it's gonna take longer and you want to give them a break, then I would just work on trading. And we can talk about that another day, um, how to get things back from your dog, whether that's something they're allowed to have or not. Hey, Norby, did you wanna come up? So here's Norby and oh my goodness, this dog, he was such a chew maniac as a puppy. And we had to try a bunch of different things because he is extremely mouthy, both orally on us, but also um, he's a loud mouth. So you like that? Oh, okay, that's good. And sometimes if the dog likes you to do this, you can hold it for them. That's totally fine. They also make items that will hold the chew so that you don't have to hold it and you don't have to worry about them getting a tiny piece off. When this gets small, I likely would throw it away. So maybe, you know, depending on the size dog you have, you know, maybe a half inch to an inch. You want this? And I really try not to annoy my dogs when they do have a chew. Let them have it. I don't want to take it from them constantly. I do want to teach them how to give it up happily, but I also don't want to be like touching them or trying to take it away from them and play with it unless they enjoy that because I don't want to create conflict in our relationship over these chew items. Another chew item that is a natural chew item aside from the Himalayan chew and the um, half antler is a bully stick. So a bully stick is all natural. They make them in different shapes and sizes. Uh, some are odor free. They tend to be stinky if you don't get odor free. And if you're sensitive like I am to smells, then you definitely want to spend the money and get the odor free. And they come in different thicknesses. If you have a very large puppy, a Great Dane or something like that, you need obviously a larger chew because these things could be swallowed. And again, always supervise them. They also have things like hooves. Those are really hard. Some of them come stuffed or marrow bones that are not raw marrow bones. You can definitely do raw if you're comfortable with that. But again, always keep in mind what's in the middle and if that's something you want to give your dog. Hey, Carla, thanks for joining. Um, no High Dog Chews by Earth Animal for, for Miss Piper. Yes, those are great too. I discovered those, I think, late last year. And our dogs really like them. They like the different flavors. Does Piper have a favorite flavor? I try to avoid the fishy ones just because personally I don't like the smell of it. But our dogs, of course, would love it. They make them in pork and salmon and chicken and maybe even beef as well. 
And you can get those all kinds of places. We really like in Brazelton, if you're in that area, in the Rough Pet stuff, they have a lot of different shoes. If you have a smaller dog, you can also get things like tracheas. Tracheas can be really long. They're literally an animal's trachea, like a beef trachea. I know, I mentioned it. He's looking at me like, do you have any? I don't. But you can get beef tracheas, lamb tracheas. The smaller the animal, the sm smaller the trachea. So that means that it's going to be easier for a smaller dog. So Carla has a large dog. She's not going to get a tiny one. She's going to get the biggest one she can find potentially. If you have an itty bitty puppy, like a Chihuahua, a Maltese, a Shih Tzu, you can even either cut them yourself, which I don't recommend, but you can buy little rings of the trachea, which sounds horrifying, right? But the dogs love them. And tracheas actually have glucosamine in them. So it's great for joints as well. And if you get the little slivers, then you're not giving your dog a ton. And it's something that they can easily consume and digest easily. So those are some of the natural things. If you guys have questions or like Carla, she had a comment about what she likes to give her dog. Absolutely post that in the comments here. Did you want to come up again? You can come up. Did you want to come up? No, you don't want to come up. <laughs> uh, so thinking about natural chews, let's transition into chews that you could use other times. So chews that are natural. I don't want to leave with my dog unattended. I really want to be present for choking reasons but they do make things you can give your dog that are a little more sturdy. Kong is an amazing resource. They have all different kinds of products. I really like the traditional Kong, which looks like almost um, like a honeycomb or a bee's nest and, uh, or like, you know, a bee hairdo. And you can stuff things in there. When you start with your puppy, you don't want to stuff things straight away. You can do little smears. So a little smear of peanut butter, Remember, get the peanut butter without xylitol. Get natural peanut butter. Are you are you escaping gas? <laughs> Come here. Come here. Um, you can use a little bit of cream cheese. You can use just a little smear of something that they might like and let them lick at that. That's a great way for them to learn about a Kong. You can also smear a little bit of like wet canned dog food in there. You can put some loose kibble in there or loose treats and let them roll it around. That's where I would start a puppy. And then you can progress to the point where my guys are, even my older dog, is getting a Kong and stuffing it with different things, whether that's hydrated dry food. So you make it like cereal, soggy cereal, and, and stuff it in there. You can create all kinds of fun recipes. We have several of those on our YouTube channel that you can look up for skinny dogs that you want to get them skinny or dogs just in general, just trying different ones. Our dogs really like them frozen. And that's great for dogs who are teething because then that's cooling to their little gums. And some puppies, I feel so bad for them. They drop all their teeth so fast. It's going to be so painful where others, it takes time. And me having braces, I totally understand uh, teeth pain <laughs> more often than I would like. You give them something to put in their mouth and a Kong, for the most part, if you get the right size, you get the right color. The black Kong is the strongest one. Red is the traditional, and then they have puppy ones as well. Um, I recommend getting just a regular red or black one in the size that you think that they're going to, if they're a, a giant breed, I'd probably get a couple different sizes. If you have a small dog, you probably can just get away with getting a small and not maybe buying the tiny one and moving up, just depends. They're really affordable and they last a long, long time. But you can freeze them for two hours or longer. It's a great idea to have those on hand. So for each dog, I like to have two ready to go. And that way I can, you know, restuff them. There's also all kinds of toys out there that have these little, like, I don't know, forms you put into and the dog can lick it. That's another option that could be safe for them. But the first time you give them anything that you think might be safe when, when you're not watching, just observe them the first couple of times they use it. They can surprise you and do things that you didn't want. And we don't want anything bad to happen to your puppy while they're trying to chew on something. All right, Carla said she'll eat any of them, but she does get the salmon, the venison, or peanut butter. Yeah, and I don't know, is, it, is the salmon one stinky? I just avoid it because I just think, oh, it's going to smell bad. <laughs> but I will share with you a bunch of different links on where you can get these. I also like Best Bully Sticks. They tend to run sales, and you can buy those in bulk 
once you know what your dog likes. If your dog's picky or they're not a big chewer, you can also try things that are more edible, but take a little bit longer than just quickly eating it. My dogs have tried things like chicken feet. Uh, you can get those, you can get like little pizzle stick things. But what you wanna avoid is anything that's overly processed, like a, a true rawhide. You know, back when I was growing up, we gave our Cocker Spaniel those things all the time. And we just didn't know any better. We didn't know that it was overly processed and those can be huge choking hazards and they can get stuck in your dog's digestive tract and then they have to be surgically removed. So do things like the no hides, do things that are not overly processed and that will help your dog be okay if they do swallow a piece of that chew item. So rotate your chews, have a variety of them and be ready when they start putting their mouth on you inappropriately or on your furniture or other dogs in your house to redirect them with a chew. And we always wanna be proactive versus reactive. So proactive means you know that when you start to watch TV, your puppy starts chewing on you. Before you start to watch TV, you give them a chew item. If you know that your puppy kind of loses their mind when you get home, that might be another time as you walk in, you go straight to the freezer, you give them a calm. If you have multiple dogs, which most people I know do, you may need to separate your dogs because resource guarding, especially dog to dog, is natural. It's a natural normal behavior. When our dogs have chew items, we do not have them together. They are either crated or in separate rooms so that we don't have to worry about them trying to get the other dog's chew item. It just creates less drama for them and it's it's more relaxing for us as well to let them have a chew item on their own. So, hey, Jamie, thanks for joining. Can chicken feet smell? It's kind of a funny question, isn't it? <laughs> uh, they haven't been smelly when my dogs have eaten them. They eat them pretty quickly because they are delicate. And so we haven't had that issue. No odor, Carla says, about the salmon one. She chews it up so fast, uh, you don't get a chance to smell it. Well, thanks to Piper for chewing it really fast for you. And that's another thing too, when you're thinking about a chew, some of them will last longer than others, especially things that are stuffed or things that aren't designed to be completely consumed in one sitting. So, you know, you can use them for a long period of time. Uh, beef cheek is another one that I tried recently and that can be hit or miss with my guys. We still have one and we've had it for, I think almost a year now or at least eight months. And it's still, it's downstairs. Otherwise I'd show you, but otherwise it's so pretty big. and you want to make sure you're getting items that your dog isn't going to, you know, try to swallow initially, especially if it's exciting. Um, sometimes they don't get those things very often. And so it can be too special. And then that can create drama. You don't have to give your dog any specific chew, but I would definitely give them something to start with because you don't want to create drama around giving them a chew if they don't get them very often. And like I said, it's for the life of the dog. If you have puppy questions, whether you're already living with your puppy or you're thinking about getting a puppy, please attend my free chat on Saturday at 4 p.m. Eastern time. You are all welcome. Uh, there's no really criteria, just show up and be ready to learn and you can ask questions. And that is uh, on the links here. So you can just register yourself and I will send out the Zoom link later today so that you guys can see each other and we can chat and connect about raising a puppy, which can be fun, but it can also be challenging. Enjoy the rest of your day and uh, see you next year.